Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from exitautomation.com and welcome to part 8 of our Cucumber with Selenium course. And in this video we are talking about upgrading everything to latest and greatest with few more extra support that we have not discussed so far in this course. So let's all help to save our tree, water and energy to save the motherly planet Earth. So I have been talking about this from 2016 I guess and I could see that uh, there is no improvement happened at least in terms of the year's development. Uh, temperature increase is happening from 2016 to 2019 and I could see we are still going in a very very bad situation. There is no rain uh, last year in India and there is no rain this year and I could see that traditionally the the amount of rainfall happening is degrading every year and uh, there are high chances that we are going to be in deficit of water pretty soon. Well, let's discuss about the environment topics later. Let's get into the topics first. Upgrade project to latest and greatest of everything. So I released this course in the mid of 2016 and I updated the course at the end of year 2016 again. But later I made all the upgrades to the Advanced Framework Development with Selenium Java course. And the course was kind of gaining more traction and a lot of people, like a lot of students started to learn the course. But I have not kind of upgraded the current course which is the basic course. So this video is all about upgrading the current course in such a way that it is going to be having all the latest and the greatest of everything. So we are going to be upgrading the complete project with following. We are going to be including the Java 10 support which is uh, almost the newest version of Java and then we are going to be upgrading our latest to, of Selenium which is 3.14 and then we will be understanding our listeners on a high level because we need it for our reporting and we are also going to be talking about testng.xml file where we are going to be creating some of our test and then we will be calling the test runner and then we will be also working on the extent testing reporting which is going to be something used for showing us a nice report. So we'll be using the extent reporting 4 which is the latest and the greatest version which is not even discussed in the advanced framework development series. So we are going to be talking about that first in the basic series. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that I'm going to flip to my Safari browser. So I'll be first navigating to our Exit Automation GitHub repo which probably the most oldest repo I have got and one of the most popular repo as well. So I'll be going there. So github.com slash execute automation. And here if you can see we have like Selenium with Cucumber repository and it has like 34 stars and 254 fork which is really really cool to see it's one of the popular uh, framework uh, video that we have. So I'm going to go to my repo here and then I'm going to be cloning this particular repo into my machine so that I can quickly show you how things look like. So I'm just going to go all the way to the item terminal. So you can use any terminal of your choice. So I'm basically going to be using uh, this terminal by the way. And then I'm only, I'll be creating a directory here. And then I'm going to be calling this as selenium with cucumber java basic. It seems to be like a very very big uh, name there but once I clone the directory it is going to be uh, showing a different thing. Alright so you can see that it's currently cloning it's done so I'm just going to be going to the selenium with cucumber folder there so selenium with cucumber I think I cloned in the different directory so let me go into that and then I will get clone this all right, let's see ls. So we have the Selenium with Cucumber. So I'm going to be going there. So this is the directory that I'll be working with. So you can see that's a master branch, which is exactly the same branch, right? So I'll be working on that. So first of all, I'll be opening my IntelliJ IDE and then I'll be opening this project. So this is our project from the GitHub repo that we have got. And it is like the one that you can see right now in your machine if you have cloned this repo, right? And you can see that we have this particular uh, Java folder and it has the Cucumber, uh, it has the Palmer.xml file. And if you open this Palmer.xml file, you can see most of the plugins are kind of very, very old. What we have is right now is like 3.0.1 version of Selenium, which is for 2016 year. So we'll be upgrading that. 
So I guess the latest version of uh, Selenium is 3.14. So let me just search Selenium Maven. So here is our Selenium Java. So I'm just going to copy that. So you can see this is the one. I've copied that. And I'll be just pasting that over here. And there is no change in the Cucumber test ng, I guess. So we're just going to be leaving that as of now. I'm not going to be upgrading that here. And even the Chrome driver has been updated. So I'll be updating that version as well, which is nothing but 3.141.59. Uh, so I updated that. And the rest of things are pretty much the same. Even after like three years, the versions are pretty much the same. So we don't really have to upgrade anything there, right? So all this upgrade has been done right now. And then you can see that I'll also be upgrading our project to version 10 of Java. So I'll go here to the project structure. And you can see that currently it says 1.8 is invalid because I don't really have Java 1.8. I have Java 10 already installed in my Mac operating system. So make sure that you install that as well. So I'll be selecting that. And then I'll be just going to the modules and from the modules, you can see that the language level is currently in five, which means it is for the older version of Java. So I'll be selecting the local variable type interference, which is nothing but the var variable. So I'll be selecting that, which is the uh, language level of 10. And then I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to hit OK. And you can see that it, sh it says me that it requires all these files to be uh, added within our GitHub. So I'm just going to be hitting cancel for now because I'm not going to be adding anything yet. And then the last change that I need to make is the settings of the particular uh, particular IntelliJ itself. So I'll just go to the preference. And if you just search for something like Java JDK or something like that, uh, I think it is Java compiler. Yeah, you can see it is 10. So I'll be selecting uh, you can see it was 1.5, so I'll be selecting 10. I'm going to hit apply. Okay, that's it. After adding all those changes, and now if I try to uh, build this particular project, you should see that this project should not be throwing any sort of new errors. So you can see that the compilation successfully completed. And now I can use the var variable within my project, which means I will be using the latest and the greatest version of Java within my machine. So let's say if I go to any one of the class, uh, let's assume that I'm going to be going to this uh, hook uh, class here. And then I'm just going to be like typing like var ka is equal to 20. You can see that the var type is currently being supported. This is nothing but the support of Java 10 has been added here. So that's the one added change that we have made in here for the support of the latest version of everything. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to be adding some of the new features within our project. So the first feature I'm going to be adding is going to be the testng.xml file support. So in this video, we'll be talking about how we are going to be working with the testng.xml file. So basically, the testng.xml file is something which is going to be used for executing all the test from the XML file rather from this particular file that we were running all these days. So all these days, we right click here and then we run the scenario and it just works fine without any problem. But now, instead of running from here or from the test runner file, we are going to be running from the testng.xml file. So for that, I'm going to be adding a new file here. And then I will be calling this as testng.xml file. And you can ask me whether the file name should always be testng.xml file. Actually, no, you can have this file name to any file name, just that the file should be of an XML file type. So we are going to be adding that. So this is the XML file. So once I add that, you can see the intelligence is so good that it automatically tells me all the helpful information. And even if I try to just open the bracket there, it just brings me all the different kinds of supported features for an XML file. But since the testing.xml file uses a doc type of uh, system, so I'm just going to be doing something like this. So you can see there is a doc type suite of system of this particular DTD, right? And then I need to add a suite here. And you can see once I add the suite, it just automatically brings the suite uh, name. So I'm just going to give a suite name as suite name. And then I'll be adding a verbose as 10. And I'm just adding the configurer fail policy 
as of now as skip so the fail policy skip means if there is any test failure happens for one of the test so it is going to skip that and then it's going to move forward right so that's what is the fail policy is all about so uh, i'm just doing that and within the suite i need to add some of the stuffs like listeners and all those stuffs don't worry about listeners yet we'll be working on that later in our video but as of now i'll be just working with the test right so because we are going to be running a test within our code which is nothing but we are going to be calling our test runner class this guy so instead of running the test from here from the intellij ide which we were doing all these days we are going to be running this time from this testng.xml file so you'll be wondering what is the reason for running this particular test from the testng.xml file rather running directly from this class file because it was pretty good all these days why do we suddenly need to change all this behavior so if you feel like this is the different thing and why is this currently required to be upgraded within this test well all these changes that we're going to be talking about like listeners and the extend reporting and all the ci cd pipelines all these different changes actually works pretty fine if you have this test in the xml file so if you have already purchased my advanced course you will be noticing that this test in the xml file has many different options something like parallel support so if i just click over here and if i just type something like parallel you can see that it has the parallel support so you can run tests in parallel similarly you can run a specific class in parallel and things of that nature so this xml file is really really helpful and you can create multiple xml files and you can call an xml file within an xml file so that the test runs seamlessly in different machines with a different browser at the same time again all these we have discussed in our advanced series already well as that said i'm going to be running uh, a very very simple test this time and i'm going to be naming this particular test as complete test run something like that All right and within this test i will be adding a class or maybe classes so within this classes i'm going to add a class and you can be wondering like, why you need to add a class and then classes well if you can see our test runner is by basically a class file and if we want to run this particular class file we have to decorate with this particular structure of the xml file and if you can see once i hit the name is equal to the intellisense is so good that it automatically brings me up the package name which is nothing but the runner and if i hit dot it brings me up the class name as well so intellij id makes my life much easier to do all sort of things and now instead of running this test from the test runner class file this method i'll be running the test from this xml file so after all this upgrade has been done i'm going to first time run a test from the xml file and i will show you how the test is going to be running so i've just right clicked and run it i guess there will be some error there you go the reasons are because the uh, the hooks that we have is actually pointing me to the wrong location of the chrome driver so basically I guess all my Chrome drivers are sitting in a different directory. So if you see here, it's CD of, I guess it's Chrome driver. And if I hit LS, yes. So this is where my Chrome driver actually sits. So the path is completely different. It's not the path that you are seeing in here. So it's gonna be something different. So I need to do that over here. So I'm just going to be pasting that guy over here. All right. So this is my Chrome driver path in my machine. So I'm just going to be saving this for now. And now if I try to run this test, hopefully it's going to spawn a browser, which is nothing but the Chrome browser, as you can see here. And then it is going to perform the test pretty much like how it executed the test with the test runner class. But just that instead of running the test runner from the class file, we are running the test directly from the XML file, right? So that's it guys, this is how we have to upgrade all our code in a very, very simple manner. Starting our next video, we are gonna be working on with test ng listeners and followed by that, we'll be talking about extent reporting. Thank you.